start off with a statement from head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen, then open it up for questions. Coach, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible atmosphere today. Really uh, disappointed that we couldn't come home with the win um, uh, for for the, the crowd. And But, you know, uh, another ranked opponent, and we're learning as, as we go. You know, this is uncharted territory for us. Um, I thought that uh, Georgia played like they've been to the tournament before, like – They've won a lot of games and finished in the top four last year. You know, they were just poised and they made the winning plays when it mattered. So kudos to them. Uh, that first uh, quarter really just put us in a hole. Um, and you can't miss 11 free throws from the strike. You know, you just can't. Uh, not if you're trying to give yourself a chance to win. And so those are things we have to learn how to make winning plays. And I just didn't feel like we did that today. And so you know, the better team got the dub. Questions in the room? The first 90 seconds, you know, kind of jumped out. It looked like the energy was there, and then mm. kind of Georgia took over. What did you see kind of happen in the last eight minutes? Well, you know, we both teams were supposed to have a week off. And because of COVID, we didn't, we weren't able to have a week off. So what you saw was fresh legs versus not fresh legs. You know, a team that had been home and was able to relax versus a team that has played three games on the road and then come back home for another ranked opponent. And so I thought that we um, just gave in to fatigue initially because we didn't start, we didn't see shots go in. And, and this, and our group, we have to mature in that way where, you know, it doesn't matter if we don't score, they can't score. Um, and I just, I just felt like Georgia was so poised and, and mature the whole time. And I knew this would be a tough game. Um, this is a team that they've played without people. Uh, they've been now 19. They've been in a ton of really close games, and they've found a way to win. Um, and so uh, uh, it'll be a lot of teaching moments that we'll get from this. You talked about Timbo being a catalyst for the offense a lot. It yeah. seemed like y'all found that a little bit in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. What do y'all have to do to get to that more consistently and get easier baskets? Yeah, I mean, they, they have to trust. You know, I, I, I hated the South Carolina game. You know why? Because it was a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, and that is not how we played. You know, when we scored 84 points, we, we weren't having five and, and seven assists. You know, we were sharing the ball. But that takes everybody being connected and confident and that's something that we're going to have to figure out on the offensive end. Uh, yet and still, uh, defensively, it helps when we get stops and we could get out and transition. Uh, we had 15 offensive rebounds and only nine second chance opportunities. Like, that's total panic. We made awful decisions, uh, not because we were being selfish, but because one person wanted to make the play. And yet again, we're going to have to show them it's going to take the team. We took a bunch. I just kept the first quarter. I was like, why are we shooting so many jumpers? Why are we not getting to the paint? And I felt like, um, you know, we settled a lot for very low percentage shots, and it hurt us. You brought up the poise that Georgia had. And mm -hmm. For you guys to get that poise, is that just experience? How, yeah. how does that sort of come about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's experience, you know. Uh, like I told my team in the huddle after the game, you know, uh, I think Joni's been there 10 years. You know, this is year four for me. Um, she has she has players that have been there a very long time. Um, I I have Monk and Angel. They just they don't even they're just experiencing the SEC. You know, so this is brand new to them. And then uh, you know we're depending on sophomores <laughs> to save the day. Uh, they didn't depend on sophomores to save the day for them. They went to their fifth-year seniors who have been there for a long time. And that, and that is um, something that they have that is a strength uh, because, you know, this, this, this whole portal thing is going to get interesting because that's like homegrown. Like, they, those kids have been there, whereas I got some kids in, they make us better, but they still don't know what they don't know. And uh, so we have to learn. And, uh, you know, I wanted us to try to protect home, but, you know, we got to go on the road and be poised against a Missouri team who plays very well at home. It's tough to get road wins. 
you know. And then we have another ranked opponent coming in on Sunday. But I, I, sus I expect us to be better, and we're just going to continue to uh, help our group grow. A couple of, not, you know, I guess for Shakira, subpar shooting yeah. games. Uh, how has she kind of handled the last couple of games? Yeah, I mean, I just think Kira uh, wants to help the team. Um, people are not going to let Kira just dance and do what she wants to do. I even thought it's, I didn't think she played well at South Carolina. You know, I thought it was very individualized, and and she doesn't like to play that way, and and I don't like her to play that way. Uh, and then tonight, she just didn't have any legs, you know, just because I had to keep her in for us to even look. We were so shell shocked in Columbia. Anytime, I mean, fourteen thousand fans rooting Go Cox, you know, that's heavy. And so, I think uh, she's still drained from all of that. Uh, but you know, what, I'm, what am I going to do? Not practice her? We have to keep going, and she has to learn how to step into those situations. In the WNBA, you know, they play all those games in like three months. <laughs> You know, so she has to utilize her team. She has to be poised, and she has to play better. Questions on Zoom? Any other questions in the room? Go ahead. So you mentioned the free throw shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, do you attribute that more to the tired legs that you mentioned earlier, or is it just something that's kind of going on in the practice gym where you need to continue to get better in that area? I don't know. Like, we hadn't shot that poorly in a long time. So is it tired legs? Maybe, you know. Uh, even for, like, Kira, she knows if she wants to score a lot of points, she's going to get fouled. I did think Stady bothered her with, with her size and her width, you know. Um, and, and so maybe it was fatigue. But nevertheless, we missed 11 of those boys, you know. We lost by 10. In the first quarter, we make a couple of those. It's a different ball game. We were missing like crazy. Snutter gets fouled at the three. I think she blew all three of them. Like you just, you have to step up and take advantage of those opportunities. And we just didn't. And that's the example of a young team. And that's an example of a of a, a team that's extremely matured. Hey, Coach, um, <clears throat> in the fourth quarter, you saw, like, a lot of new intensity mm -hmm. versus you saw in the first three quarters. So how can you take that and build momentum? Yeah, on? well, we're just going to watch film. We're going to show them, you know. They play like they, they were desperate. And when you play ranked teams, you have to play like you're desperate from the jump. You can't think that, oh, it's okay, I'll get back. Like, you know, you're not playing. Like, the, these, these teams are – uh, poised and ready to go. And like we just showed up in the rankings. They've been in the rankings all year. So this is not something that is new for them, you know? Um, and, and, uh, and so we have to play with that sense of urgency uh, from the beginning. And, you know, that's something that we'll learn by watching film on Tuesday. Anything else for Coach? Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.